Jacob Rees-Mogg has suggested the EU should reopen negotiations or lose out on the £39 billion. Image Getty, Mr Rees-Mogg has urged European Union leaders to reopen withdrawal agreement negotiations or face the possibility of losing out on the £39 billion. Brexit settlement. Speaking earlier today, the chief Eurosceptic said, if the EU think the withdrawal agreement is non-negotiable then we will have to leave without an agreement. Do they want the £39 billion, do they want an agreement, or us just to leave? It's up to them. Meanwhile the government signalled for the first time Brexit could be delayed even if Theresa May's deal is supported. Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt has explained Downing Street will take a few days to formulate some proposals on how to solve the backstop anger before Theresa May heads to Brussels. Mr Hunt said he believes there is potential to get a withdrawal agreement signed off without delaying Brexit, but if key legislation is not passed in time then an extension to Article 50 would be considered. It is the first time a cabinet minister has hinted at the possibility of delaying Brexit even if Theresa May's deal is approved. Speaking to BBC Radio, Mr Hunt said, We need to put those proposals together, make sure they meet the concerns the EU has expressed and then I think we will have a proper discussion. He added, I think it is true that if we ended up approving a deal in the days before March 29 then we might need some extra time to pass critical legislation earlier. Austrian Foreign Minister Crane Nysel warned Theresa May that Britain is likely to crash out of the European Union without a deal. Mrs Nysel's comments stepped up the EU's rhetoric of denying Theresa May the opportunity to reopen negotiations on the withdrawal agreement despite Parliament sending a clear message to Brussels that amending the hated backstop is the only way a deal can be secured. Mrs Nysel warned the Prime Minister there is no magic solution to getting a deal signed off by March 29, but there was not enough time to extend Article 50 and delay Brexit. Speaking on BBC Radio Force Today programme The Diplomat, who hit the headlines when Vladimir Putin controversially attended her wedding last year, said, According to the Article 50 procedures, the deadline is March 29. Mrs Nysel said there is no magic solution to the Brexit deadlock image Getty, it's very difficult to imagine a breakthrough car and Nysel, Austrian Foreign Minister Shea added, there is a time pressure because what couldn't be reached by negotiation over the last years, it's very difficult to imagine that there can be a tremendous breakthrough, a magic solution, in the next few days in order also to have this ratified. In due time for the remaining EU members, Mrs Nysel's comments come as top EU diplomats unified against the House of Commons order to send the Prime Minister back to Brussels to replace the backstop with alternative arrangements. European Council President Donald Tusk, who earlier this week labelled the Brexit referendum stupid, told Mrs May, the EU position is clear and consistent. Donald Tusk's tweet image Twitter, the withdrawal agreement is not open for renegotiation, yesterday, we found out what the UK doesn't want. But we still don't know what the UK does want. Read below for live updates on Brexit civil servant Dolly Robbins. Is Britain's chief Brexit negotiator. Image Getty, 6.22pm. Update, Germany, preparing for a disorderly Brexit, says Merkel. German Chancellor Angela Merkel said. On Thursday the federal government and the 16 states were taking precautions for a disorderly, but Berlin was still working to ensure that Britain leaves the European Union under a mutually agreed deal. Speaking after a meeting with state premiers, Mrs Merkel told reporters, on the issue of Britain's exit from the European Union, we all agree that we want an orderly exit, we're not working towards a scenario that would take place without rules, nevertheless, we have to prepare ourselves, to and we have discussed with each other that we have a close exchange and that we are ready to meet again. At short notice, but our goal is another one, namely to get an orderly exit done. 5.43 p.m. Update, delay, acceptable, if deal has been agreed, says Brady's ear. Graham Brady has become the second senior Tory after Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt to hint at a Brexit delay after telling the BBC that he could accept one, as long as a deal was already agreed. Sir Graham, the chairman of the 1922 Committee of Backbench Conservative MPs, said a short delay to the 
the 29th of March exit date would be acceptable in order to get the necessary legislation through Parliament. Officially, the government says its position has not changed on the date but Mr Hunt has acknowledged extra time may be needed. Earlier this week MPs rejected Labour amendment which would have postponed Brexit if no deal was reached by the 26th of February. Sir Graham's amendment, which proposed the replacement of the backstop plan for the Irish border with alternative arrangements, was passed by a majority of 16.6.14 p.m. update Irish parties urge EU to remain firm on withdrawal agreement Northern Ireland voted 56% to remain in the 2016 vote. The statement was co-signed by Sinn Féin Stormont leader Michelle O'Neill, SDLP leader Colm Eastwood, Alliance. Party leader Naomi Long and Green Party leader Claire Bailey. They added, while Westminster has voted this week against a no-deal Brexit, it is non-legally binding, and therefore no steps have yet been taken to prevent a catastrophic crash out from the EU on 29 March. The EU has been crystal clear in stating that they will not reopen the negotiation on the withdrawal agreement, including the backstop. We urge the EU to remain firm in that position and call on the British government to reconsider the reckless path that they have adopted. 6.12 p.m. update may accused of an enormous act. If bad faith over backstop the main pro-Remain parties in Northern Ireland have joined forces to accuse the UK government of an enormous act of bad faith over the border backstop. Sinn Féin, the SDLP, the Alliance Party and Green Party. Ni nee said that while any opportunity to reconsider the decision to leave the EU should be taken, the withdrawal deal, which the Prime Minister previously signed up to, would have mitigated the worst impacts of Brexit. The parties, which have recently presented a united stance on a number of Brexit issues, criticised Theresa May's decision to go back to Europe to try to find an alternative to the backstop. The contentious backstop measure would have seen Northern Ireland adopt a different regulatory framework to the rest of the UK if a wider trade deal failed to materialise after the end of the Brexit transition period. In a joint statement issued today, the parties said, while it may never need to be deployed, the backstop is the guarantee in all circumstances that no hard border will be re-established on this island. Prime Minister Theresa May and her government in their attempts to abandon the backstop have demonstrated an enormous act of bad. Faith 1922 Committee Chairman Sir Graham Brady Image PA 4.58 PM Update Not enough known about planning, says Scottish fishing boss people in the industry are worried about how Scottish mackerel and prawns will get to key markets in France, the Netherlands and Spain. If there are transport jams at the border, some firms could go bust, according to Jimmy Buchan, chief executive of Processors Group the Scottish Seafood Association. Scotland's fishing sector vociferously backed the Brexit campaign ahead of the referendum in 2016. Fishermen say EU membership weakened the industry over decades by giving quotas to trawlers from other EU countries with smaller fishing stocks. But they have concerns about what a no-deal Brexit could mean for the United Kingdom's fish exports which including processed fish, are worth around £1.9 billion, $1.3 billion, a year. Mr. Buchan said, I do feel that, at this late stage we don't know enough about planning, unless someone puts on a ferry route or guarantees the French will not impede the free flow of traffic, what are we supposed to do? 4.56pm update, stockpiling, not an option. For fresh fish, warn fishermen fewer Scottish langoustines, scallops and salmon will reach the European Union if there is a no deal. Brexit, because border delays could mean they rot before they can be delivered, fishing officials said. Scottish fishermen plan to reduce the catches if Britain exits the European Union on March 29 without a transition deal, in order to avoid potential losses, industry officials said. Scotland accounts for most of the fish caught in the United Kingdom, which is the second biggest provider of fish from the EU after Spain. While some businesses are stockpiling to prepare for any disruption, that is not an option with fresh fish. 4.40pm update, Brexit will go down to the wire, with Cliff Edge still 
in play, says analyst Prime Minister Theresa May's success in Parliament earlier this week is merely a temporary reprieve, a political analyst has said, while predicting Brexit negotiations would down down to the wire. Mrs May is poised to head back to Brussels to seek alternative arrangements to the Irish backstop plan after winning backing to do so from Parliament on Tuesday. But Professor Tony Travers, director of LSE London, told Express.co.uk, this is a temporary reprieve which allows her to go and ask if she can reopen the withdrawal agreement which she previously said was impossible to improve on if the EU doesn't go for it, it allows her to say it's their fault, this is going to run down to the very last minute, and the cliff edge scenario remains in play, 4.32pm, update, we need weeks of inventory, says ice cream boss Emma Job said, weeks of inventory, not months and not days was the right amount for consumer packaged goods, one of the lessons we learn over and over again is when you do build inventory, it very often ends up being not exactly the right mix of products, with Britain at risk of leaving the European Union without a deal. Unilever is the latest consumer and retail firm to take such measures to keep imports and exports smooth. Unilever makes other British staples, such as Marmite spread, in Britain. Unilever is stockpiling ice cream amid fears of a shortage after Brexit, Image Getty, 4.28pm update company stockpiles ice cream in UK amid post-Brexit shortage worry as Unilever is stockpiling ice creams in Britain and deodorants in continental Europe to guard against potential supply disruptions in the event of a no-deal Brexit. The Anglo-Dutch consumer giant, which is the world's largest ice cream seller, makes British favourites like Magnum bars in Italy and Germany and is building up a few weeks of extra inventory in Britain in case of any border delays. Likewise, several of its European deodorants, including Axe, Dove and Rexona are made in Britain. Alan Jope, the company's new chief executive, said, A few weeks of extra inventory is one of the important steps we are taking to make sure that we minimise any disruption to our customers and consumers. 4.22 p.m. Update Ireland looks to US for Brexit backup Ireland's Deputy Prime Minister is preparing to travel to Washington as Dublin seeks backup from Congress to block a no-deal Brexit. Simon Coveney, who also serves as Foreign Minister, will make the trip to the US next week to meet with Irish-American lawmakers behind a move to oppose the return of a hard border in Ireland. The planned talks come just days after MPs in Westminster voted to scrap the backstop designed to avoid a hard border and replace it with alternative arrangements. On the day of the vote, Congressman Brendan Boyle put forward a resolution which, if backed, could see the US Congress formally oppose the reimposition of border checks in Ireland. The Irish Times reports, 4.20 p.m. update, a backwards step, says Arrow's Minister Jesse. Norman said, the government's priority remains to secure an agreement with the EU that means UK driving licences continue to be recognised, but the wide availability of IDPs now through post offices should give reassurance to UK motorists that they can continue to drive in the EU, whatever the outcome of Brexit, the AA is warning that UK drivers could be sent back home or fined after crossing the channel if they do not have the correct documentation following a no-deal Brexit. The organisation's President Edmund King said, the government has taken a backwards step in discontinuing postal and online applications for IDPs, which the AA has conducted successfully for the last few decades. The sharp uptake in applications shows that drivers are Concerned about driving on the continent post-Brexit, the AA fears UK drivers could be sent back home after Brexit without the right documentation. Image Getty, 4.16pm update, post office boosts branches selling international driving permits. The post office has increased the number of branches selling international driving permits, IDPs, ahead of Brexit. UK motorists may require the documents to drive in the EU. In the event of a no-deal withdrawal from the bloc, IDPs were previously available from the AA and the RAC. Through the post, at the AA shop at the Euro Tunnel Terminal in Folkestone and at 89 post office branches. From
Friday they can only be bought from 2,500 post office branches, around a fifth at a cost of £5.50 each. The AA saw a 19% increase in applications between September and December compared with the same period in 2017 and said companies with numerous drivers who travel overseas will now need to queue alongside other post office customers. 4.05 p.m. update, red alert for car industry, says Hawes just over 1.5 million cars left UK factories in 2018, down 9.1 percent on the previous year, and the lowest for six years, the figures revealed. Production of diesel cars was down by 22% to 561,000 last year. Mr. Hawes said the fall in investment was deeply depressing and should send a strong signal to politicians to secure a Brexit trade deal, he said, with fewer than 60 days before we leave. The EU and the risk of crashing out without a deal are looking increasingly real. UK Automotive is on red alert. Brexit uncertainty has already done enormous damage to output, investment and jobs. Yet this is nothing compared with the permanent devastation caused by severing our frictionless trade links overnight, not just with the EU but with the many other global markets with which we currently trade freely, 4.01 p.m. update, British car production slumps amid no-deal fears British car production fell by 9% last year, the biggest drop since the 2008-9 recession, and investment slumped by nearly half due to fears about Brexit. An industry body said on Thursday. The once runaway autos sector, which employs some 850,000 people in Britain and has been lauded by politicians as a rare manufacturing success story, has seen sales, company spending and output slump since 2016. The year of the Brexit referendum. Volumes have also been hit by a crackdown on diesel, stricter emissions rules disrupting supply and a slowdown in China, the world's number one automobile market, the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, SMMT said, last year saw the biggest drop in production since a slump of nearly a third in 2009 following the financial crisis and the fall in investment of £589 million, $770 million, leaves it at the lowest level since the SMMT started compiling figures in 2012. SMMT Chief Executive Mike Horse said, Brexit uncertainty has already done enormous damage to output, investment and jobs, yet this is nothing compared with the permanent devastation caused by severing our frictionless trade links overnight. Not just with the EU but with the many other global markets with which we currently trade freely, 3.50pm update, it's not just about Ireland, says Hubnims. Hubner added, if there is no openness on the UK side to include those Assurances in the political declaration on the future EU-UK ties, the process could mechanically take us to no deal. The political declaration is a non-legally binding document that accompanies the legally binding withdrawal deal negotiated by the EU and May's government. The British Parliament resoundingly rejected that deal two weeks ago and has told May to reopen negotiations with the EU on it. Hubner said the EU would not blink on refusing to renegotiate the withdrawal agreement or replacing the backstop. She added, a step further would risk undermining the single market. If the single market loses its integrity, it would be the end of the EU. It's not just about Ireland. The risk of no-deal Brexit has grown. 3.44 p.m. update. EU hints at compromise. If UK accepts customs union, the European Union will offer Britain more assurances over the Irish border backstop in a political declaration on post-Brexit ties, but only if London moves towards accepting a permanent customs union, a leading EU lawmaker dealing with Brexit said. Danuta Hubner spoke as Prime Minister Theresa May headed back to Brussels to demand the renegotiation of the legal withdrawal treaty she agreed with the EU, which was voted down by MPs earlier this month. Mr May wants to replace the backstop plan with unspecified alternative arrangements aimed at ensuring no return of extensive border checks on the island of Ireland, something the EU says is vague and not enough of a guarantee. Ms Huber
said alternative arrangements relates to the future what can be added or changed in the political declaration is to ensure some new arrangements that would solve the issue of a hard border key to this is the conversation with jeremy corbyn cross-party dialogue must yield some new elements for the future the only thing we have not yet tried is a shift of the UK's red lines, Andrea Jenkins tweet earlier today, image Twitter, 3.25pm update, replace Robbins as chief negotiator, says Jenkins Brexit backing MP Andrea Jenkins has called on Theresa May to replace chief Brexit negotiator Ollie Robbins claiming he doesn't negotiate, Ms Jenkins, MP4. Morley and Outward was referring to an article in today's Daily Telegraph which suggested senior civil servant Mr Robbins had warned against supporting a Tory plan to reopen talks with Brussels in a series of emails to senior officials. She tweeted, Why are we sticking with and paying for a negotiator who doesn't negotiate? Time to go Mr Robbins, let's get someone in there who will put Britain first and not the EU, in the face of the speculation about Mr Robbins. Future role, Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt told Radio 4's Today programme, the negotiating team is going to change, but with Ollie Robbins still in his central role, 3.17pm update, chances of Brexit delay rated at 50-50 Goldman Sachs has raised its estimated probability of no deal Brexit to 15% from 10% after the Parliament vote. The bank also cut the probability of Brexit not happening at all to 35% from 40% while leaving chances of a delayed Brexit hit. 50%. Meanwhile, Deutsche Bank raised its estimate of the probability of a no-deal Brexit to 15% from 5%. However, the bank also raised to 50% its prediction of the chance of a last-minute ratification of May's deal, versus its prior view of 30%. It cut the probability of a second referendum to 5% from 15%, 3.15 p.m. update, risk of no deal, small but rising, the risk that Britain will crash out of the EU without an agreement is low but rising, while the likelihood that it will delay Brexit is growing, banking analysts said on Wednesday. After mixed messages from votes in Parliament, with the pound taking a tumble as a result, with two months left, until Britain is due by law to leave the EU, lawmakers voted on Tuesday to demand Prime Minister Theresa May seek changes to Britain's exit treaty, which the EU says cannot be renegotiated. They also voted to express opposition to a no-deal exit from the EU but rejected a proposal that would delay Brexit if necessarily to avert crashing out. Without a deal, some analysts saw these events as raising risks of a no-deal Brexit, though they still assigned a low probability to this outcome. However, belief has grown that the government will have to extend the March 29th deadline for its EU exit to 57pm update. Tuck says government is nowhere close to meeting its Brexit test. Straits Union Congress calls for revolutionised withdrawal agreement featuring single market and customs union integration. After a Brexit meeting between trade union officials and the Cabinet Office, a spokesman for the Trades Union Congress said, unions are always willing to meet with ministers and officials who represent the interests of working people, but were not prepared to settle for warm words or half measures from government. Our movement has been clear that working people need a binding guarantee for their rights, now and into the future, we won't support a Brexit deal which fails this test and the government has come nowhere close to meeting it the strongest possible protection for workers' rights would come from sticking by single market and customs union rules, Dutch PM Mark Rutte has said the EU is waiting for Theresa May to put forward an acceptable proposal, image Getty, 2.32 PM update, Dutch PM waiting on Theresa May after Jacob Rees-Mogg said it's up to the EU to blink first on reopening Brexit negotiations, the Dutch Prime Minister hit back. Mark Rutter said he and the rest of the European Union is waiting on an acceptable proposal from Theresa May. After speaking with European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker, Mr Rutter tweeted, Brexit now in final phase, sick, the EU is united, the withdrawal agreement is the best and only deal on the table, awaiting proposal from UK that is acceptable to EU and will enable ratification in the UK, spoke with a Juncker EU. Withdrawal agreement is the best and only deal on the table. Awaiting proposal from UK that is acceptable to EU.
and will enable ratification in the UK. Mark Rutter at Minpra, January 31, 2192.11 p.m. Update EMPS holiday cancelled members of Parliament have had the February recess cancelled as the government desperately tries to push legislation through to ensure the UK meets the March 29th deadline. MPs were due to take a 10-sitting day break from February 14th before returning to the Commons on February 25th. However, many political commentators believe the extra two weeks will still not be enough to pass key legislation required for an orderly Brexit. The feeling was exacerbated when leader of the House of Commons, Andrea Leadsom, revealed there is no Brexit-related matter on next week's order of business. But the Prime Minister's spokesman moved to alleviate fears the required legislation would not be passed in time. He said, we are determined to have everything in place in order for us to leave on March 29. The fact that recess won't be taking place and members of Parliament will be sitting shows you that we are taking all available steps to make sure that March 29 is our exit date. MPs have had the two-week February break cancelled. Image Getty, 1.43 p.m. Update, cost of May's Brussels trips reveal there is a May's numerous Brexit trips to Europe have cost the taxpayer £278,175 according to official figures being reported by the Mail on Sunday. Cabinet Office. Data shows £278,000 spent on borrowing the Queen's plane to jet the PM back and forth to Brussels and around. European capitals for her December Brexit deal pushed pic.twitter.com slash gmgmcxafu Harry Cole Atham Rari Cole January 31, 2191.03 pm update Germany mistakes Ireland flag in tweet about solidarity over backstop much has been made of the EU solidarity with Ireland over the backstop debate since MPs voted for Theresa May to try to reopen withdrawal agreement negotiations However Germany's foreign minister made a huge gaffe today by not even knowing Ireland's flag. Read more, Merkel's foreign office in Brexit gaffe as it tweets wrong flag. In solidarity with Ireland 12.44pm update, not a single bit of Brexit legislation proposed next week Commons leader Andrea Leadsom has revealed. Next week's business and, with time running out for the government to pass dozens of pieces of legislation before the March 29th deadline, there's not a single iota of Brexit matter on the agenda. The proposed business for the week will further raise queries the government is preparing to delay Brexit by extending Article 50, a move hinted at by Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt earlier today. Mr Hunt became the first senior government official to suggest a Brexit delay will be necessarily in order to pass key legislation even if the withdrawal agreement is signed off soon. He said the Government might need some extra time to pass critical legislation to ensure Britain leaves smoothly. 12.23 p.m. Update. Britain will leave without an agreement if EU does not listen, says Rees-Mogg chief Brexiteer Jacob Rees-Mogg has insinuated the EU should think carefully about refusing to reopen withdrawal agreement negotiations because they stand to lose billions from Britain's budget contribution. The ERG chairman said. If the EU does not reopen negotiations then Britain will just leave the bloc without paying the agreed £39 billion. Mr Rees-Mogg said, if the EU think the withdrawal agreement is non-negotiable then we will have to leave without an agreement. Do they want the £39 billion? Do they want an agreement, or us just to leave? It's up to them, Jacob. Rees-Mogg has questioned how much the EU really wants the £39 billion divorce bill. Image Getty, 11.47 a.m. Update, Downing Street reaffirms commitment to March 29. Deadline Ether Theresa May has reaffirmed her commitment to ensuring Britain leaves the EU on time after senior. Cabinet Minister Jeremy Hunt announced a Brexit delay is possible. Earlier this morning, the Foreign Secretary hinted Article 50 May have to be extended even if the withdrawal agreement is agreed soon in order to pass key legislation. However Downing Street moved to dismiss the suggestion, saying the government remains determined to ensuring all our arrangements are in place for Britain to leave the EU on March 29. Theresa May's spokesman said, the Prime Minister's position on this is unchanged. We are leaving.
On March 29, 11.09am update, Angela Merkel will push Britain to the edge of the precipice on Brexit deal. German Chancellor Angela Merkel is ready to go to the edge of the precipice in order to shut down any movement on the backstop, a Brussels source has said. Mrs Merkel is the latest EU leader to join the list of politicians who have rejected any possibility of reopening negotiations on the withdrawal agreement despite MPs signalling a change to the backstop could be enough to secure a deal. The source told The Times it was part of Mrs Merkel's negotiating strategy to force Britain to look into the abyss before a deal is done at 5 to midnight, adding, that is how she works. 10.15 a.m. update. Brexit could be delayed. Government admits the government will take a few days to finalise alternative proposals to the backstop for Theresa May to hand to Brussels leaders but if the EU does not agree to them it could force a Brexit delay. Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt has warned. Speaking on BBC Radio, Mr Hunt said, I happen believe there is potential along all the different routes that have been discussed. But we need to put those together to make sure they meet the concerns the EU has expressed and then I think we will have a proper discussion. He stopped short of saying an Article 50 extension was now necessary but hinted the government may need to request it. Mr Hunt added, I think it is true that if we ended up approving a deal in the days before March 29th then we might need some extra time to pass critical legislation, but if we are able to make progress sooner then that might not be necessary. Jeremy Hunt has hinted a Brexit delay is possible. Image Getty, 9.53am update, finish. Prime Minister warns EU of populists as he unveils vision for future United States of Europe. Finland's Prime Minister has set out his vision for the future of Europe, saying he is inspired by his party's founder who had a vision for a United States of Europe, speaking in the European Parliament, J.U.H.A. Sipila also warned the EU they have been given lesson by populists across the continent. Mr. Sipila said Santeri Alkio, founder of the Centre Party of Finland, was a 1920s pioneer who called for a unified continent to ensure peace on the continent and even mentioned all countries using a common currency. The former businessman, who leads Finland's centre-right coalition, called for more European integration by saying, we need implementation of the single market, implementation of the internal and external security policies, migration policies, climate policies, better implementation is the best tool against fighting populists and increasing citizens' confidence in the European Union. J.U.H.A. Sipila L. meets President of the European Parliament Antonio Tajani art before his speech, image EPA, Mr. Sipila explained, populists hit the U from several fronts we have seen where it leads when the solution for complex issues are provided by simplifying matters, in the end nobody takes responsibility. There was a case in the UK and the result is there for all to see, speaking about migration, the former Finnish army captain demanded more border reinforcement. He said, we should manage migration increasingly through direct resettlements form the refugee camps. This would mean smaller pressure on EU's external borders and less smuggling. At the same time management of our external borders should be reinforced. Helsinki takes over the EU presidency from Romania in the second half of this year. Read more. Take responsibility. Finland blames EU for Brexit and tells Brussels to listen to voters. 9.27 a.m. update. UK car industry on red. Alert over a catastrophic no deal. Fantastic Brexit has put the UK car manufacturers on red alert. An industry boss has said. Mike Hawes, chief executive of the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, said the entire UK motor industry is concerned about. A cliff edge no deal as a new report revealed car production dropped by nearly 10% and investment plummeted by half. Last year, Mr Hawes said, with fewer than 60 days before we leave the EU and the risk of crashing out without a deal are looking increasingly real. UK automotive is on red alert. Brexit uncertainty has already done enormous damage to output, investment and jobs, yet this is nothing compared with the permanent devastation caused by severing our frictionless trade links overnight. Not just with the EU but with the many other global markets with which we currently trade freely, given the global 
Headwinds, the challenges to the sector are immense, Brexit is the clear and present danger and, with thousands of jobs on the line, we urge all parties to do whatever it takes to save us from, no deal, in 2018, 1.5 million cars drove off the production line, the lowest for six years, while investment fell to £588 million as businesses postpone decisions until the UK's future trading relationship with the EU and other countries becomes clearer. My cause, Chief Executive, if SMMT has said no deal Brexit is a catastrophe and a fantasy image PA archive PA images 8.52 AM update, prepare for the worst, says Juncker tells you Jean-Claude Juncker has warned European heads of state to prepare for the worst after MPs told. Theresa May to reopen Brexit negotiations over the backstop. The European Commission president said Tuesday's vote further increased the risk. If a disorderly exit, he told the European Parliament the withdrawal agreement will not be renegotiated, and the debate in the House of Commons does not change that. Jean-Claude Juncker delivering his speech to the European Parliament yesterday. Image Getty 8.17 a.m. Update Prime. Minister refused to rule out delaying Brexit in meeting with MEPS. Theresa May refused to rule out trying to delay Brexit. In a Downing Street meeting with Conservative MEPs, it has emerged. The move infuriated EU Tories who told the Prime Minister they just want to get on with our lives. They said any extension to Article 50 would trigger European Parliament. Elections later this year which would force them to stand despite Britain planning to leave the bloc. The MEPs warned Theresa May not to interfere in the EU's politics any longer, saying a delay would anger EU member states who are due to receive Britain's proportion of MEPs. One Strasbourg diplomat told The Sun they said to the Prime Minister, You're going to cause resentment among our colleagues, especially if you start messing with their elections, getting involved in elections. The MEPs told The Sun that while they were worried a delay could be sought, they were reassured that Theresa May is against shifting the March 29th deadline. Speculation is growing Britain's departure could be set back until the summer. Or even the end of the year, if MPs cannot sign off the withdrawal agreement in the next two weeks. A July 1st extension is looking ever more likely in order for Parliament to pass the legislation required to ensure a smooth departure from the EU.